Looks like it. Hi, Patrick. A little bit. <laughs> Need the hard reset. Welcome back to Motion RC Live. It is Friday, June 12th, and uh, we got another fun show in store. Today uh, being, well, actually first, you just saw, that was my customized OV-10, which I showed here, I think, two, two or so weeks ago. Got out with it last week um, for a couple flights. Absolutely love the white wing that I did on top, and hopefully next week I'll get out with Patrick. We want to do some tandem flights because the OV-10 is on its way, guys. Um, you know, any day now it will arrive. In, uh, in stock in the US and you know it's gonna be in Europe as well and uh, everybody pre-order is gonna start getting those shipping notifications so we just wanna bring back attention to it because it's been a while now since we uh, announced it but it's an awesome flying plane I was happy to get back out with it and again love the the customized version so we'll do a tandem flight let Wes uh, let Patrick sorry Wes <laughs> let Patrick take it through its paces and then um, at some point in the future probably around July Alex and I do intend on heading down to uh, Florida and meeting up with the Merry Boozers flying down at that field and um, having some fun there. So I will definitely, Wes, if they survive, both OV-10s will come with me so we could do some tandem flights of those as well. But now, uh, again, this is week two of our show, so you see the schedule on the side of the screen there. Um, we're going to get into our RC Crash reactions today. There's still... I have not watched every single submittal. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> Alex has. He's been taking them all, downloading them, and uh, getting them ready for next week when we unveil our finalists. So I would rather react to some of these crashes uh, live without having seen them at this time. So that's what we're gonna do today. I think we got about 20, 25 of them, Alex? Yeah, 22. About 22 that we're gonna go through. The last two weeks we've shown, you know, some. But again, today is the last day to submit. So any submittal on Hobby Squawk or Facebook that comes in with 613 with a June 13th date will no longer be eligible. It's gotta be a June 12th date, so midnight tonight will be your last chance to submit a, um, an entry. And then what's gonna happen? Again, I'll just go over it quickly. Next week, live on the show, Alex will debut a video that he puts together. We're gonna select probably about 20 to 25 finalists. And um, in the bottom right-hand corner of that screen are gonna be numbers, but we'll unveil the finalists here live. And then right after our live show ends next week, we will make that video separate. It'll go live. And again, there'll be a number and everybody's name in the corner if you're a finalist. And in the comment section of that video is where we're going to vote 
on our grand prize winner. So you, the customers and fans, you get to vote on who wins the grand prize. And the grand prize is going to be, it's up here, an Air Titan. So that will be the grand prize to the winner that you select will get themselves an Air Titan, which will be awesome. We figured why not do one of our uh, newer planes and also a trainer since uh, so many crashes happen. Maybe you have to get back to training um, on your plane, but we thought it was a great model. You know, a lot of guys are gonna have fun with it, something you can have fun with. And again, as a thank you all for playing, then our runner up, we will give away a Mercury. So this is you know, another trainer glider platform. So the runner up will be chosen by Motion RC, um, aside from the voting. And then, as we said, there's a third prize. And the third prize is uh, just a random draw from everyone who submitted. All the names will get thrown in a hat and we will give away a $50 gift card to the uh, third, I guess the third place winner, if you will. But that has nothing to do with um, you know, your video in any way, shape, or form, as long as you submitted, uh, you will have that prize. And all the winners, uh, it'll be two weeks from this show where we announce all the winners. So next week we unveil the finalists. That video goes live after our live show. And uh, you have a week to vote. So you have a week to watch that video, vote on who you think has the best crash. Um, and then you go, you know, take it from there. We'll announce the winners and then we'll move on. After this crash contest is done, we'll come up with another contest because these have been fun. From the March Madness contest to now a crash contest, we'll figure out what the next one is uh, going forward. So I say, Alex, are we ready? We're ready. Let's see some of the submittals. What's the first one? one? This one's from Wubar Master. Woo oh, Barb, Woo Barb Master on Hobby Swap. Oh, oh. man. <laughs> That, what was that, a, a, a P-40 that hits him? Uh, I, I or a hawker? It, but the title is RC Hunter Becomes the Hunted. Oh, yeah. The oh. hawker hunter hunted. Oh, man. <laughs> it's always good when you have a run cam on it for something like that. Like, that's when the run cam shines if you're going to get into an accident to really see it. <laughs> but now I wonder if the other aircraft survives. That's incredible. Yeah. Chris, yeah, I just announced the prizes. Pri Grand prize is going to be an Air Titan Skynetic. Runner-up is going to be a Skynetic Mercury, and the third place prize is going to be a $50 gift card. Moving on to the next one, another one from Ru Wubarb. Am I wrong? Oh, I, no, no we're right. Wubarb Master again. I feel the pain on this one as a chase pilot. That's the Albatross, right? Yeah. That's the HK oh, Albatross. Oh, man. It's been a while since you hit me like that. I, I, I haven't hit anybody. In a while. <laughs> now I'm not flying my OV-10 around you next time, because <laughs> now it's definitely going to happen, but... Ooh, oh. that's rough, and you know yeah, it just props tore up the side. Yeah, of that thing and, uh, I wish we got damage of what it looked like after the fact. Yeah. Definitely but, uh, bonus points. There's a few of these where people walk up after and show. Okay, the could be bonus points. Yeah. All right, moving on. Looks like we got the snake. Is that Vic? Yeah, Vic, one of the first people to submit. Oh, that's one of those F117. Uh, F117. Oh, get very far. Vic, what happened there, man? Reversed ailerons? Or just crosswind? I mean, that's EPP. Maybe the wind just... Looks like the oh. wind just blew him over. <laughs> I, I know I know. Steve Hodges has this plane, and he loves it, but I don't think he flies it when it's more than, like, a mile-per-hour wind because of that fat <laughs> body. It's so good on Oh, man, he flies in that parking lot, too. That's just... And now some of these... I have the volume turned down all the way, some a little bit of the way, because sometimes it's uh, PG. Yep, people people throw out. So well, sorry if I miss any of that. It's... When we do the final video, I think we just add beeps. Yeah. Add some nice quality beep beep, because we understand when you crash, man, this is rough. Yep. All right, we got another one from the snake. Yep. The diamond, what was this? Oh, the diamond jet. That's that, like, pointy one. Oh, man. Oh, oh it's right, free, freezing. Did he hit the fence? <laughs> There's a fence there? Who put that there? <laughs> Who put that there? Oh, man. Is this Apollo? Or... Oh, I feel like that's not Apollo, is it? I don't know. Vic's in the chat. He'll tell us. Vic. Ouch, man. That's rough. Did it, let me see the nose gear. I didn't watch the nose gear on that. Does it hit the nose gear or does it hit the... Oh, it hits the mains. Yeah. Oh, no. The whole nose the whole is nose just gone. Off. <laughs> the whole nose the whole is nose just nose gone. Rips right off. Woo! That's a good one. How's that for sport? Jeremy Salt. Oh, this one was... Yeah, this one's, this one's good. Whoa. He's trying to do inverted passes in an F-16 under the table. I saw a different angle of this. Yeah, I used the angle we didn't watch. 
Oh, oh and man! I didn't slow it down for him here because it was. Whoa! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's like oh, just man. trying to be dangerous. Again, oh my he's goodness! He's close there. He's so close. He says he got it under once, but I think Kyler was holding the video and didn't hit record till the very end. Of course. But uh. Oh. Oh man! Let's man. Slow one more time. Unbelievable. See ya. Well, that was trying to be dangerous. He's he's going for the win with that. <laughs> that's that's, that's what, what you do about. with an aircraft that you're kind of just done with and you're ready to move on. Cause he's flying bigger stuff. So good for Jeremy. Good submittal. Uh, RC Flyer 271. Yeah. This one I, I had to take the audio out of. There okay. There were a lot of curses. <laughs> what are we looking at? I see. We're getting a little bit of freezing. Go replay. Oh man, that's an Avanti and an L39. Two planes up in the air. What do you? What, what happens? <laughs> what happens? They find each other. Yep. They find each other. Oh, oh that's oh. the worst. The Avanti survives. <laughs> oh man, I think I should have caught this one. Yeah, it's the, the guy flying. Is able to keep flying. He knocked his buddy out. Oh He's man! Quite upset. No, no fun. <laughs> Next one, Percy Flyer Fifty. All right, this one looks like it was shot in 1992. Okay, uh, hey. A crash is a crash. A crash is a crash. There was no timetable. It didn't have to be new. <laughs> oh, I love that. That Look at circle the radio. fade. Look at the Look radio. radio. Well, hey, guys still fly with those radios and swear by them. <laughs> so, you know, we have those guys at our field. I think everybody does. Oh man, that's a big. What's a sop? Sop with? It's a uh, sop with. Yep. With sop, sop with pup. Oh Doesn't no! Very far. Too high a climb. Oh, oh man. Ace's size is definitely 1992. You can tell by the radio. <laughs> wow. What do you think happened? Their tail heavy or just? It looks like it climbs too high. See yeah. now I've got a biplane, my first in front of me. And that makes me nervous <laughs> of what's going to happen because I've never flown a biplane like this with the, you know, the way the wind interacts between the wing. Let's watch it one more time here. Yeah, that I just got to see that again. It does look like he goes way too steep. Yeah, it looks like a very steep incline. I think incline. in the comments of it, you said something about the radio locking out. Not back then, yes, with that radio. But look how high he climbs. Oh, like, oh and something, oh, and fell, something off. fell off. Uh, smack. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, somebody saying his RX pack fell out. <laughs> so we probably had no control. All right, the next one is... Good um, submittal, sir. Oxtrick? Oxtrick from Hobby Spot? Ox, ox, oxotic. Exotic. Oxotic. Oh, oxotic. Wasn't even close. <laughs> we know ox Oxotic. Phoenix A26. Oh, Ooh, these oh. are freezing up today. I don't know what's going on. It's, Let's see if we have 25 on. videos loaded. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, man. Yeah, good. Bonus points for Carnage. Is that a B-25? B-26. A-26. A-26. B-26. He probably meant B-26. I don't know. I copied his comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 That just snaps. Woo. Look at that balsa Carnage, man. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. I always feel bad for people, but it's amazing when you see it, like... Who doesn't love a crash? Like, why do people watch NASCAR? You know? You're watching because those crashes are intense. It's fun to see them. That's why <laughs> if you're going to crash. Go to the next one. Oh, Inertia RC with a glide pull. Yeah. This this one I have the volume up, I think, for because they're losing it in the background as this goes terribly wrong. Can uh, they not release? Uh, uh, uh. They can't release. Oh my goodness! They're just. You, mean, you don't even see. We know what happens. Kill the cameraman on that one. <laughs> How do you not follow that all the way to the end? Uh, uh. Oh no! All right, and done. On. Gogster. Yeah. Gogster, yeah. Gogster, seventy millimeter, a ten. See, now it says yeah. Bochner, see, this Looking must be the... Good. Look how good, it, that approach is money. You can't, oh. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, oh. 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 That's rough. That's when you're pointing the nose down, too much speed. Yep. Trying to land it like a warbird. You got to get on those mains, but right here he points down oh. with all that energy. Oh. Porpoise. Oh. oh. Hey, you know what? I'm surprised that the wings are still on. 
everything seems to be uh 10 out of 10 for the cartwheel yeah 10 out of 10 on the cartwheel Un unbelievable <laughs> oh. mm. All right. it looks like he customized that one too that always hurts the most yeah when you spend a lot of extra work on it all right next one gb yep gb linden. linden with a sky mule funny the first rc model airplane i ever filmed was a sky mule way back in the day <laughs> wow gb what happened to that one i don't think he's here today but oh man watch that one again so he's going fine he's going fine Looking good. Something. Uh, looks like right one of there. his, maybe one of his props uh, loosened up. Because, you know, with a twin, once one prop isn't going, you're pretty much, you're pretty much toast. Yeah. <laughs> when, when you rely on one prop. And one more crash here. Giant scale spit from GB Linden. Yep. He I'm flew a giant GB. scale. He might not be the pilot on these. Sometimes he's the cameraman on these. Large scale spit. Oh no. Uh, oh, oh my goodness, get okay. out of there. Get out be okay. Go around, go around. All right, he went around. What's happening here? <laughs> I just wonder, like, what's, you know, now oh, it's like, man. oh, now he's in his head. Oh, now, he, oh no. Oh no. Yeah. That's so sad. That's a balsa one, too. Oh man. Ooh. Damage-wise, though, looks like you could, you know, if another wing was available, you'd be. Oh, he got a clip wing. He could clip the other wing off, <laughs> cover it, and just go with the clip wing Spitfire if he wanted to. Oh man, yeah. that is intense. All right. Not fun. Next one is from Frank G R E. Frank G E. Oh, this is a custom. T U one forty four. Does it leave the ground? Is it your up? Oh my goodness. Yeah, it leaves the ground for a oh, second. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh no. Nothing's worse than when you don't even get a chance. Uh, Looks like it got so much wind, air under it. Hmm. So we can't we're going, all right, we should be coming back here in a second. We coming back? Is it back? Houston, we have a problem? All right, hang with us, sorry. Oh, we lost a bunch of viewers, too. Slight internet hiccup. What are you going to do we're with back. this live right, stuff? We're back. We're back. All right, let's, we only have a couple more left. Yeah. So okay. we're still on there. This is from our friend Chris Rybert. Chris Rybert in upstate New York with a heli. Finally, a heli. Oh, man, these always crash epically. <laughs> when they do go down, he's flying across the street. Oh. Oh. They always sound so good too. Oh, oh man! And a car in shot. <laughs> Chris Ryberg, guys, if you follow him on YouTube, if you're into helis, he does a lot of heli stuff. He does 3D planes. Uh, good dude, and definitely worth a follow. Do do a search for Chris Ryberg. He helped us out with some rotor scale stuff back back in the day before I left to come down to Georgia. Just a good dude. Glad he got us a middle in there. And the last one for today. From Hobby Squawk. From Hobby Squawk, Brown 64. A bad day with a peach. Oh, Jack. man. It's a quick clip, and his wife is filming in the background. You can't hear it, but they'll Jack. be able to hear it. She's, <laughs> she's excited about the grass. Oh, Jack. man. Yeah, I'm not hearing the audio on these. Just, yeah. I'm not wearing headphones. But my goodness. <laughs> oh, wow, he Jack. just snaps. He was inverted and just decides to... <laughs> I don't know Find the earth. That, that plane was like, I'm, I'm good for today. We good here? <laughs> End it. Fantastic. Unbelievable. Right, coming back, to, you coming back to me. All right, guys. I don't know what just happened with the internet stream. It happens. Um, if it happens again, just bear with us. Uh, you know, that's the first time we've yeah, had to deal with it. It wasn't on our end. It was Comcast or whatever oh, the internet provider is. Yeah, yell at Comcast or whoever it is. Oh, well. But we are back, guys. So, yeah, man, Crash Contest, super fun. And we thank everybody 
for your submittals, and we're looking forward to see how this all wraps up. I don't know if we might have just seen a winner there, but, um, you know, there are some really good ones from what Alex has been telling me through. So when we sit down next week, we're going to go through, watch every single one of them, both of us, and uh, we'll pick probably the top 20, 25 of them, make a video for it, and again, you guys will all be able to vote on that uh, after next week's live show, but we'll debut the video here live next week. So, uh, before we get to what's on the table in front of me, because I got whoa, the... Whoa, whoa, Pump whoa. Pump those breaks. We still have seven more from our Facebook. Those are... Oh, my goodness. There's off. more? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, you didn't tell me that. Those were just Hobby Squawk submittals. Yeah. Oh, man. Let's see some more crashes. Yep. Let's see them. These are Facebook submittals? Yes. So, this first one's from Timothy Wetzel. Timothy Wetzel... Oh my goodness, this isn't looking good. Oh. This isn't. Oh! Who put that there? <laughs> oh. Look at the wide open space. The guy hits the only tree. <laughs> oh no. I can't even see where his field was. Yeah, Is that I, it? I, oh, he I looks like he either. was looks like he was heading towards his field, but then something went down. I don't know what what jet that is. Uh, it's like a rebel said, type the title of thing. Said EDF jet. I think I see maybe an FMS logo in the front, but I can't really I, tell. Yeah, I'm not sure. Looks like he's always oh, bringing his gear up right at the end there, too, <laughs> trying to save his landing gear. All right, so this next one is from one of our friends in Europe, and I have no idea what's going on for the first 15 seconds, but it's entertaining. Okay, and they can hear it. I can't. Uh, Sylvester Flygen. I, I just, they're like set up there. He set up a, uh, like a course to try to fly under. Okay. I, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> Rupert Hauser, it's some good yeah. graphic work, though. Look at this. Yeah, I don't. Okay. All right, but you get the idea. The, those are like. Uh, they want to knock so that out. To, they're trying to cut it. They're trying to cut the styrofoam with the wings here. Okay, she's she's, she's pretending to be the stuff. plane. Yeah. Gotcha. Unlos gents. Oh, they got wings with yeah. streamers. They were going for it. There you go. Oh, that's look how, at that. That's how it was supposed to look. That was a good one. That's a good one. I wonder if they're doing FPV or line of sight. Oh, there's another Smooth. one. They built Smooth. Up a oh, Slight tap. Oh. oh, little crash. Ooh, that's cut. awesome. Clean, that cut. clean cut. I kind of dig this idea they got yeah. going. Wonder what they're using. There. I don't know what's going on with the Jägermeister. Here. <laughs> they got Jägermeister. I don't, I don't know what those words are. Hopefully. <laughs> what are we promoting here, Alex? <laughs> None of us could read German. Well, I was oh. waiting for that. There we go. Oh, nice, nice slow spin. Is that a buffalo? <laughs> I'm not sure what that plane was. Uh, oh, glider. Oh. oh, look at that. The tail bending. Oh, man. Hey, Farbod. Oh. TNRC pilot, any word on when the Shrike will be back in stock? Uh, the Shrike and the Havoc are going to be on their way. I don't. I can't tell you off the top of my head right now. Um, but they'll be back for sure. Just when they come in, get them in. That was a wildcat, Ace is High says. Yeah, it looked like a... I wasn't sure if it was the Brewster Buffalo. Oh, man. They All just right. set up. This was like... Yeah. Yeah, he's... he's oh! oh, oh like, thanks for the nine submissions in one video. Wow. Only counts as one if it's in one video, though, right? We gotta find the best one. If, if this is gonna make it, we're not sure. Wow! I love <laughs> the wing separating from the, the second time. That one's epic. Corsair, is that it's the like FMS a, one? A skateboarder doing a kickflip on this Ooh. one. Ooh. Imagine the wings reattach and it kept going. <laughs> the, the wings spin under the plane. All right, moving on. Catch back in. Moving on. This, uh, good luck pronouncing this guy. Who is this? Lee Davidson? No, no. Oh. M-D-U-S-Lee. -S -S That's an SU-35. And who put that there? Oh, he just goes right into a light. Was that the light post? Yeah. Oh, no. Light post got him. Oh, man. If that's a, if that's a maiden, that's never... Uh, oh. Never fun. Ay, ay, ay. All right. That's terrible. Next, Lee, Lee Davidson. Davidson. And Optera. I don't know what happens here, but this thing just disintegrates right here. Oh, I think the prop maybe flew up. I... Whoa. It looks like you got a lot of vibration at random. Like maybe the the prop was like the motor dislodges from yeah. the Whoa. You see a quick shot of the rest of the Yeah, the motor the just there. the motor just disembarks from from the <laughs> aircraft. <laughs> Motor's like, Oh, you wanna go that way? And then we got We're another going one that way. here. 
And Run another one from cam. Lee Davidson. Run cam flyers. What are we sitting on? Uh, a strike right, eagle. What's going on a 64 right millimeter. Oh. Right into a tree. Right into a tree. Yeah, I don't know what we're looking at. I mean, we must be going out the nose, but... Yeah, it's an F-15, I guess. That's just the intake on the right, but... And that's the, probably he's powering his camera through that wire. Uh, oh, is... man. All right. Jake Burkett coming up with an F-18C. Oh, man. It's a Blue Angel one. Is there sound on this guy? Uh, lightly. I think. Lightly. Light sound. Really got to listen for it. Oh, man. I've crashed one of these. <laughs> <laughs> and I showed it. He's up. He's out. This might be one where we... Oh, you're letting this one go. This, this yeah, one. this one, if it was under around 40 seconds, I didn't bother to cut it down. Okay. I only cut down the ones like over five minutes. Fair enough. Yeah. Have we gotten people back? Oh, we're back to 125. Thank you, oh. everyone. Oh, no. He shows in slow motion. So Again, in slow motion. Oh, it's a man. fire sale. Oh, man. Next one from Jake Burkett. The Avanti S. And he's back. He's back. Oops, he got that sound up too loud on that one. Looking smooth, looking good. He's got a lot of... Oh, that's like a tight space to now. fly. Oh, it's... The sound as it rips through the trees <laughs> is epic. It's always a great sound. When he's rolling, in. he's doing the rolls, and do put that there. Oh! And the battery shoots out if you look really close. <laughs> it's a good one. All right. It's Gavin Street. Gavin Street. Looks oh, like Thumbs down for the cell phone video. Thumbs no up. No control. Vertical. I hope the car survived. Oh, man. <laughs> it just went into the parking lot. That's scary. Yep. Oh, man. No control, no control. That's the worst. Actually, we got a video that we'll, maybe we'll share it next week. My uh, my hawk. Oh, the bay? Uh, the other day. Uh, I had some fun with the hawk, and it survived, and it's up. incredible. No control, All right, and our no last one. Fernando. Fernando, Fernando, Fernando last one. Video. You guys got to stop doing that. It kills me. Perfect day, Maiden. Yeah, I don't understand the, the vertical cell phone video. That is rough. Oh. <laughs> I feel like that was the most relatable crash. It's who that too. Toss it up and, and not enough yeah. power. Alright. Oh man. There we go. So I didn't realize we were doing Squawk then Facebook, but uh that's a lot of submittals right there, and there have been so many more. So um we didn't want to spend the whole time doing that because we will do that. Uh you know, at some point. I think what Al's going to do after we make the finalist video, then he's going to take just all the submittals and just make a big crash uh, compilation video that we'll put out there after this whole contest is done. So back to the right side, guys. Before, as I was saying, before I get into the Tiger Moth, because we're just going to go around um, how a Nexa blade. This is my first Nexa model uh, in front of me. And I know now if you guys are jumping in Hobby Squawk or Facebook, I know Wesley Miller's here. He got the P47. A lot of guys are sharing... Um, they're Nexa models, uh, pictures and stuff, so this is the first time I got to see one, and I'm excited. I've never done a biplane, but before that, we just wanted to go around the community again, because again, this show is about you guys, and about the hobby, and sharing things, so let's head over to Facebook, because a couple things happen. Speaking of Nexa, one is Lewis Sharp. He is a member of our club, uh, the CCRC. He got his hands on the Twin Otter from Nexa, and he maidened it. Uh, from Nexa. He maidened it the other day, so I'm hoping to get out there with Alex and meet up with Lewis, and I'd love to film this. Um, you know, I think he was trying to fly and film on his own by himself, it seems, but uh, it looks to be a solid flying model. And, uh, you know, obviously he's just using a cell phone, so he can't zoom in as much, but excited to see more from him, and I definitely want to get out there uh, and film it. We'll get our cameras on that bad boy, and you know, make it, make it look awesome. Next one coming from, is this, is this, uh, Don Adams? This is Don Adams, yeah. Don Adams, he 
customized a 70 millimeter F35 to an F35C. He cut in some flaps on it and uh, it looks awesome. Put Cali graphics on it, I believe, into his own livery. Awesome post, love seeing that. I've never, you know, a lot of people wondering, you know, getting flaps on the F-35 would probably help to slow that thing down. I love flying the F-35, but, um, you know, I love the way he did it. He did a great job with it, so I hope he does do video at some point. And then another one was from Frode Gulbranson uh, from the EU. Got himself his first F-22, so just wanted to give him a shout out. Thank you so much for joining the, uh, you know, the Motion RC Facebook customer community. And, uh, you know, looks happy to have an F-22. If you saw last week, Patrick was flying that thing around like a champ. Um, you know, it's a great flying model. So that's Facebook. But before that, actually, just yesterday or two days ago, I posted something. Come back to me, Alex. I'll bring it in here. And I want to get it out to fly. I was messing around on my own time. And I threw up a post on Facebook. I got an L-39 that I customized. I'm, I'm a comic book nerd, too. So I love me some Batman. So I had a crashed L39 that I decided to turn into a Batwing. I always thought the, the L39 had a good enough shape for it. So I messed around and uh, I even got Christian Bale Batman figure inside the cockpit. But uh, I made it look like a one-seater. I just blacked out the second seat and put a little, actually put a little um, wall in the back so you can't even see uh, in the back of the canopy. I didn't do anything to the bottom yet. I got to do something to the bottom to make me see it. I'm definitely going to 3D print some missile pods that'll go here. Probably going to yellow those out too, just to give it more, um, you know, the contrast, the black and yellow, the 1989 Michael Keaton Batman. That's, that's the best Batman. But, uh, you know, that's, uh, that was my inspirato, but posted this on Facebook and got a lot of likes. So a lot of people seem to, to dig that stuff when you go, uh, you know, when you go with crazy, nothing scale, just make it your own. But I had a crash with it a long time ago. It was just the body sitting there. I don't even have I don't even have a power system in that one yet. I'm gonna have to take it out of somewhere and uh, you know get a power system. But I'm not gonna put any doors on it. Like I messed up the whole bottom. I'm just making that <laughs> wearing costume. It says you should be wearing the Batman costume. costume flag. That'd be amazing. Oh my god. I, I, do I, I have to get a costume. I have the pajama costume. My kids love that one. It's just, you know, pajamas with those. Like, that, that'll probably work. Probably look just as silly to do it that way. But uh, awesome. I'm excited to see that thing in the air. And I only, uh, you know, again, I don't care if it black paint is going to bubble. I don't care. That thing's just going to be a beater for fun. So uh, hopefully it lasts. Um, did anyone just looking at the comments quick? I think we're good on Facebook. So let's head over to Hobby Squawk. Some cool things happening on the Squawk this week. And guys, we can't thank you enough for jumping on there. There's so many, uh, you know, it's growing by leaps and bounds. A lot of people are enjoying Hobby Squawk. So the first things first, I think we're going to start with Delta Dart. Yep. Delta Dart. I love this pose. He's got the ro his customized rotor scale, um, <clears throat> Yui. 450 he customized it but he got out in texas to a tank battle so it was a it's a tank location and they let him fly around while they were doing tank battles and i just thought that was super cool he definitely gets some good uh good pictures this is michael rosnick as delta dart um i met up with him a few times but just just looking at that with the bridge the tank the heli like everything about this is awesome and uh he should definitely be sharing this on facebook too because this is the type of stuff that gets a lot of uh Get a lot of likes, and he does he does some great customizing work. So, definitely looking good, uh, Michael Rosnick. Next one is from Rander Lungen. Now he's brand new to Hobby Squawk, and he posts some tank battles over in I believe he's in Italy. He said Verona. There's a big tank uh, once a year, a huge tank battle, and I asked him if just from looking at the sets of this, like he has all these up close, beautiful pictures that he posted, but I, I was wondering if he would, I'm hoping he shares a wide shot of just how big the battlefield looks. Cause uh, between, I'm not sure what these tanks are. I'm sure not all of them are Henlong, might, might not even be a Henlong one there, but that's okay. You could share anything on Squawk, but just, I absolutely love, I can't wait to get to one of these type of battles where you've got, you know, the, the scenery around it, you know, driving the tank in your backyard is one thing, but when you got the buildings and you got, you know, hills and mountains, places to hide, like that's what makes it all worth it. And that's what I'm excited for. Um, the eventuality of getting to, 
And then I'm, I'm not sure if Two Wing's in here, but Two Wing TJ, he was sharing uh, what he's been doing during the quarantine. He has two Black Horse models that he put together. I'm still waiting to see this one in person. This was the DO-335. Uh, my type of aircraft because it's just different and crazy. And then he also has the Gilmore, which I've seen in person. I've said before uh, in the past, awesome looking plane. Reminds me kind of like a GB in a way, but um, gorgeous looking model and probably an excellent, excellent flyer. So T Two Wing TJ, he's a big uh, squawker. So he's always posting stuff and hopefully he gets a chance to get some video when those eventually go up. So if you're out there, Two Wing, get some video, get someone to take some video and uh you know get that posted because i want to see those babies fly so next things next and one last uh shout out social is instagram our instagram account blows up like crazy i i prefer i think instagram might be my favorite social media platform just because it's all pictures and uh if you're just following rc people then you're just getting inundated with cool stuff so the first one is this rc airliners yeah uh balsa dust oh balsa dust enterprises with a cool sun country al37 I mean, it's just unbelievable that you keep seeing so many new schemes on the AL-37. It just, it never ends. Then we had Low and Fast with an F-22 with a rainbow in the background. Looks like an awesome spot to fly, so just calling out Low and Fast. Good post there. Thank you for that. And then this one was crazy. We had two pictures. <laughs> RC <laughs> Airliners. I saw this post. I'm like, wait, what? He's got a 1.2 meter fox glider being towed by a Skyhawk by an A4. I've never seen an EDF jet tow, but he's got he's got it on the string. I wish there was video of it, but uh, I happened to come across that and I had to do a double take because I'm like, is he really towing a, a glider with an EDF jet? I guess it can be possible. So if you will it, dude, it is no dream. <laughs> As they say, that's unbelievable. But, uh, you know, good post there, RC Airliners. I don't know who you are, but I enjoy following you posts when you post stuff like that. That is really, really cool. So now I think it's time to get on with the Nexa Tiger Moth. So has anybody picked up? Because I was hoping to get a British Camel one, but they went out really fast um, in this first batch. So I went with the Royal Navy, which I dig this scheme as well. It's my first, as I said earlier, it's my first uh, biplane, my first, like, and I was going to say World War I plane, but I don't believe the Tiger Moth, Tiger Moth came out in the 30s, so well after uh, that time. And then by the time they said, you know, reading up the history of it, it was being used in World War II, actually, um, for obviously not for fighter reasons. I'm sure like reconnaissance, things like that. But, uh, you know, you wouldn't want to be in one of these if, <laughs> if the Wolfs are coming by. But, um, you know, cool, cool subject. And uh, I always wanted this type of 30s era uh, biplane to do. So I'm going to be setting this one up on 4S using our Admiral GP5. I'm going to go electric on it with a 65 amp ESC. And then you just need four servos, so two smaller ones. I got the high tech HS85 BBs for the ailerons. And then two larger ones, the 485 HBs for the elevator and rudder. And uh, you can see it all laid out on the table. So you want to do a quick unboxing? Yes, sir. Play the, uh, we unboxed this yesterday and then just left it here for the live show. But it comes packaged beautifully. Everything, a lot of tape used to keep everything nice and secure. So this is just a quick time lapse of me pulling everything out of the box. But taking a look through the manual, it does not look like it's going to be that hard to build. There are some things I love that they already have, like the decals are already on it. Um, a lot of things seem to be pretty much done. Like even the hinging is done on one side. Like they've already glued in the hinges to the control surface side. You've just got to glue them into the, uh, to I guess the fuselage of the mounting side, which isn't going to be too hard. Um, now that I've built a few of these, like I have, again, I finished. Oh, if you want to get up behind the camera last week, I showed you the wings of the zero. I've hung up the fuse now and you can look in this side, the other side, um, I've got the elevators installed, the rudder, the pull-pull on the tail wheel, if you see it up top there. And now she is just waiting for the motor. I even did the, I even did the, front, uh, the front mounting, put the exhaust on. So the Zero, for the most part, is mostly done. Once I get my motor in, which I'm gonna, we're going to get an equivalent of a 60cc uh, Admiral motor. So <clears throat> once they come in stock, I'll be getting one and I... I can't wait to fly that. Like, I'm just glad that was a weight on my mind to get that together. But pulling it back, I've built now a few, put together, built, 
I always say build. I assembled a few ARF models, guys, and, you know, my fear of them is now gone. There are things I like to do. Uh, I find them fun, actually. It's relaxing to, to sit here and assemble and figure things out because certain models you do, you know, not everything is perfect uh, on a Balsa ARF. There are things that might not work, obviously, depending on the systems you use and such. But, um, you know, the thing I hate the most is hinging. I don't like that because it, it's one of those things where if you mess it up, you're you're done for. But, you know, so far, so good on everything. But uh, I'm excited to put this one together. Um, and obviously, we'll be making a video as soon as I do. But everything laid out on the table in front of you, everything's covered beautifully. So we could start, uh, start with the fuse. So taking a look at the fuselage. Again, like you're going to have to... You know, you got tons of space to put everything you need in there. So I just imagine, envision my ESC going towards the front. And you already have, they already have the tubes in there for two elevators. They're going to go into two elevator control rods. They're going to go into one servo. And then your, your rudder is going to go into another one. So, uh, you know, you're just going to mount those here. Sorry, I just saw a comment from Gavin. Apologize Gavin for Street. the vertical video. Now I feel bad for calling him out. <laughs> no, don't feel bad for calling out people with vertical video. We will not stand for it. And if it affects you... He said it happened too quick. <laughs> if it affects you in the voting, who knows? But it's up to the people. But vertical video is... Ah, my wife does it all the time, and I always yell at her. Like, turn the video. Turn the phone horizontal. It takes a second. But um, taking a look, this is one of the bottom wings. So again, with the... Uh, with the Nexa, so as I said before, actually the ailerons were already hinged. I went to pull these apart, so I shouldn't say that. They're or the hinging is already done on the ailerons for this model, which is great. I I, I enjoy that somebody else who does this better than me uh, has it done, but I do love that everything's pretty much you know put together. You don't have to do anything as far as decal wise. So just looking at the manual, it's not that many pages. Um, it shouldn't take that long. Then you have the top wing. So now the top wing does not have a control surface, but again, nicely covered, nicely finished. They already they already marked the holes that you're gonna need to uh, you put your wiring across for your bi cable. They give you wires that uh you know that attach the two wings between. Then as you see here, like I said, with like the rudder, you can separate it, but the hinges are already done on one side. So they're already glued into one side. You just have to line it up nicely and put it in on the other side, which isn't terrible. But everything's like, you know, everything's pre-cut. So, you know, you're not going to be doing too much extra effort. You get your, you get three big control rods, again, for your rudder and your elevator. You get two smaller control rods for your ailerons. You got your landing gear, two spars, so assume top and bottom wing would probably be a good assumption you got your cowl which again fiberglass molded nicely and that's gonna slip on now one thing I've been reading on hobby Spark, a lot of people said with their electric setups they're having trouble finding that CG so um, I saw some people recommend cutting out um, part of the firewall and making an extended tray for your battery so I'm probably gonna go that route if I need to obviously when I get there I won't know for sure I'm not taking anybody's word for it until I'm I get to that point but I would envision, you know, if I did that, then I'd have a little tray that's behind the cowl and my battery I would just slip in, you know, a little deeper. So I would just cut out a space that's just big enough because I plan on flying this on a 4,000 Admiral Pack 4S, a 5,000 Admiral Pack uh, 4S Admiral. So if I slip that, I could probably get it all the way up against the firewall of where the motor would be and then just you know, Velcro it down in there, but you figure my motor's gonna be somewhere here with the supplied electric mount or gas. Well, if you're going gas, you'd be using these these hooks. I was actually thinking of using these. These are the mounts for the gas motor. I'm thinking of maybe just to save weight, putting one of these out there and just resting the battery on top of it with some like Velcro or something. Because once it's in there, it's not gonna go anywhere. But that might that might conserve some weight rather than building, you know, another piece of balsa wood or something out there because those are pretty light but we'll see when we get there but i'm excited to do it 
Has anybody gotten anybody in here got themselves on a Nexo? Uh, yeah, I think I saw Dad's RC hanger called the camo version, waiting for her to arrive. Oh, nice! So he was one. Of, is Dad's RC? Somebody said they got the last one of the camo one in stock. I, I like the way that one looks. I hope somebody, because again, show wise, it looks like the next show we're probably going to get out to in 2020 is just going to be null in the fall. Our whole show uh, schedule. I know right now EDF Jet Jam is happening. So I apologize that we couldn't make it just with everything going on in the in the world. Um, it just wasn't time yet. I honestly, personally, I have family that could get affected and sitting in a booth, um, you know, where everybody's coming to you, touching everything and blah, blah, blah. Just it didn't seem right yet, even though hopefully by uh, September, October, things get better with that. But as long as Null in the Falls open, I'll be there. And uh, we'll be excited to go. But Jet Jam, I'm hoping to see some posts. I haven't seen much posts, but guy, I'm sure a lot of guys who are normally in the show, like Dave Kowishki, I know. Um, a lot of people are over at the EDF Jet Jam. And we hope we were able to be there this year, but we just we just couldn't make that happen. So hopefully guys post on Squawk or RC Groups or wherever on Facebook and just share some of their experience because that, that place is great. Um, it's a great show, and we fully intend to go next year as long as... <laughs> nothing else as long as nothing else comes out but at this point who knows you know everybody say maybe an alien invasion is next um you know who knows what's gonna happen but looking around at some of the other bits and pieces um finishing this you get all your wing struts these are all these are all done up in wood again all pre-cut pre-drilled pieces so it should be very easy like i said it, it's it's the first balsa model i'm looking at. i'm like oh now that I've built a couple, that this isn't this isn't going to be terrible at all. You get nice wheels with actually mine came with the De Havilland uh, wheel covers, which are kind of cool. See those again? They got the DH already embedded. Look like they were 3D printed, but they're you know plastic. But you got the DH on there. Looks fancy schmancy, <laughs> if you will. Pay it forward, Wesley. Wesley Papa Boozer finished that P47. They're waiting to maiden that thing. They said they got it together super fast, but then all your bits, so you get all everything that you do get a uh, fuel canister and your tubes if you want to go if you want to go gas. But everything I do like, you know, like a black horse kit, everything is is separated. But like one baggie is just going to be your control horns. Um, one baggie looks like all the pull pull things that um, all the cabling that you're going to put between the wings comes in one shot. All your motor mount pieces all come together so you're not like searching around for anything and then all your wing mounting and it looks like with this you're gonna have four wing mount big plastic bolts and then two actually your your canopy gets bolted in from the side it's not like a I may fix I may change that to to uh, magnets I just think magnet driven you know at the time this was probably first built that probably worked but rather than having two big plastic uh, you know nuts coming out of the covering just make it just make it a uh, magnet driven and i doubt this plane is going to fly fast enough that it's gonna for some reason the canopy would blow off i'm using big solid magnets to to get it in but that's about it for the uh for the tiger moth anything you guys want to see have you seen any of uh have you guys seen any any nexa models you guys want to purchase or because we have it's just incredible to see how fast we went from like, you know, no balsa models to we got a large selection of balsa out there, and there's something for everyone, as Alpha likes to say, and as we like to say. RC everything. RC everything. You know, they named the company was named Motion RC uh, for a reason because the the intent was always to not just be all about aviation, but also surface ground. Taken to the seas towards the end of this Take this month, man. We're we're gonna be. I can't wait to get a boat in here. Be unboxing a boat maybe in two or three weeks, depending. I'm just gonna slide some of this stuff over. So you wanna hand me some stuff? Uh, well, I was just gonna make, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna separate and then we're gonna get to next thing on the list, which is I got myself a KV-1. The tanks, man, those things sell out so fast. It's unbelievable. I love that people are really digging the tanks and I've taken to them. I, I like them as, just to drive around and have some slow fun outside. Play with my kids is fun with them, but also it's just static models. So the next one on my list was the KV-1. 
So uh, I think we could build this up. We got about 10 minutes, a little more. I think that's the beauty of tanks. I think I could at least get a battery in it and see how she goes. So the KV-1, nice World War II. I I'm keen on the World War II style tanks. That's my, that's the era of tank I really enjoy the most. So because everybody grabbed the Tiger, the Panzer that I wanted uh, in that next batch, went out so fast, I said, let's go with the KV-1 instead. I love the way these things are packaged, guys. Again, these are ready to run. So you get everything you need uh, in the box and it's and it's boxed up really nicely. I'm just gonna tilt this down for a sec to pull the tank out. And anybody who's interested, I could do a size comparison with some of the other tanks I have. But there it is. So she's gonna need some detailing, some decals on her. But then you get your transmitter, comes out with the instructions. You get pellets or airsoft BBs. You get your battery. You get all your peripheral bits that come in there. And then you get your IR sensor. So when you want to do IR battles. And you get a USB charger uh, as well. So that's everything that comes out of this tank box. And I love that it's virtually complete. Um, you know, putting it there. I love the suspension on her. KV-1 is pretty. We need a need the T-34. Yes, I definitely need the T-34. But I wanted this one because, um, again, for kids, I like that the, uh, the shorter barrel on the KV-1, so they're not going to be smacking into the walls and stuff. I'd rather my young kids drive that and like the Sherman. Let me bring my, my original Sherman over to show you again. 16 scale. It's one of the, it's still a bigger tank, obviously, but it's not as big as let's say the King Tiger, which is my absolute favorite one. But, ah, it is, but not as high, not as tall, but it's that barrel. It's really that barrel. The King Tiger apart. Yeah, right? You know, the barrel just makes it so much bigger, but you can see, uh, you know, size comparisons. It's good. It's nice. Good. It's good. It's good. I love it. Yeah, Panther. I still got to do more work on the Yag Panther as well. But let's keep, let's keep the Sherman right there. So let's quickly... Oh, I don't have batteries in here yet. Let me grab one of the ones that has batteries in it and swap. Let's just see if we can get her driving on the table and see how quick it goes together. So I'm just going to pop the batteries out of a different one. I forgot to prepare. Let's get these in. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. I don't want to go too crazy because we are going to make an official unboxing video. Um, we're ready. Okay, now in. This box is where you get all your accessories, like all your miscellaneous bits. They have uh, your wheel covers, um, but you do get the, the tops of the sticks are in here. They just screw into the, to the controller. So I'm gonna try to, so again, I gotta rebox this all up and then redo it all again, so I don't wanna lose anything. But you get your, you know, your thumb, your thumb spots for the sticks, and they just like push in. Easy. Let's do that. There you go. And then we got the battery there. So underneath is where you just one screw. You just gotta take one screw out to get the battery in. There's any there should be juice in this battery let's see sometimes you got to put these batteries uh, you got to bring them back to life with like a little bump in your charger so we'll see let's see quick it just plugged in oh yeah lights already on so you see the light flashing because somebody left the power switch in the on position so I'll turn it off quick I'll turn it back on in a second let me just 
get this back here. A little bit of everything on this week's show. False plane crashes. And then hopefully we're supposed to have some gorgeous weather for the beginning of next week. So I want to get out and fly. I got the high performance version of the Hawk that I want to fly. I got, man, some of those, some of the HP versions of things that we just hadn't had a chance to do. I want to get out with Patrick again for another update on the Learn to Land. Uh, he's going to fly a Warbird for us at some point. We got that Spitfire we got to meet up with. But now I'm turning on the transmitter. I'm going to turn on the tank. Light is flashing. And then I'm going to press the lock button. Get that foam off there. Look at that foam. There we go. Thank you. There it is. <laughs> and now we got this press. Oh, yeah. Oh. I love them. I love them already. I'm going to aim it this way. Sometimes they test. Do they test these before they put them away? There might be a a pellet in there. Nope, no pellets in there. But look, smoking already. Love it. You can turn the smoke off, as we've seen. If you've seen Wesley do these, I do these. There's always something you should do right out of the box with a, with a headlong tank. Just get that battery in it, drive around, and make sure that everything works. So we have machine guns, two clicks, fire your cannon, then you can check your volume. It gets louder and then it shuts off. And then you got the smoker, turn the smoker off. Well, you could hear the smoker, so when I turn the smoker on, Starts puffing, turn it off with the smoke button, and then you can switch your sound effects too. So I'm gonna go to volume. So now. And then it's like a turbine. And then switching sound effect. And we're back to the original. I love it. I'm I'm having too much. I'm having too much fun. I cannot wait. Where are we going? Is there questions here? James is playing. G B Linden. Who's who's muted? James, when are the next batch of tanks coming in? Um, the next batch of tanks are probably gonna be later in the summer. Um, they are definitely on their way. It's one of those things that you know I don't think us or Henlong ever expected. Um, the, the outpouring again it was brand new to us RC tanking and you know we're so excited that people are getting into it and you know like me I'm, I'm like you there's so many that I still want and uh, you know as soon as they come in just make sure you click that notify me when back in stock button but I'll let you know as soon as I know more about when they come in but I don't think we're too far away maybe two months ish you know time but um you know they'll be back and you know going forward Obviously, we're learning the, the market, and we're learning how many we need and how many last. It's, it's, it's one of those things where we didn't know, you know, until you just dive in, until you get the agreement, you say we're going to do it. And, uh, you know, that's basically uh, the deal with the Henlong tanks. They are awesome. I'm happy, but when you do see one that you want, uh, jump on it because they don't, they're not, obviously, they're not going to last too long. But, uh, Mary Boozer. Yeah, man, this is, I love the KV-1. I like that short barrel. Something about it just looks dirty um, and beastly. But I got to do some, I got to do some weathering to it. And maybe this is one that I'm going to do, try the winterizing. Uh, if you guys check out Mary Boozer's channel, he winterized his uh, Panzer, I think it was, or the Tiger 1. Probably the Panzer, I think he did. But maybe this one will get the winterizing because, you know, Russia, World War II would have been nice and cold over there with some snow. So I may try that with this one. Maybe I'll do it on video too. 
But uh, either way, that's one thing I love about these because, you know, I'm like you guys when I'm sitting in there on my night sometimes. Uh, I don't just want to sit there and watch TV. I like to do things. I'm always doing something. And uh, even just weathering a scale model, it's, it's making me just want to even just static models. Like, you know, anything like that, it's fun to do now. And, you know, just something else to pass time as we get older here so you know it's it's fun but i'm excited about it so last bit we are at uh henlong kv1 going down now in stock guys if you saw we released some videos on the team corally so it's corally it's not corally so somebody say the name was weird I, I don't know no weirder than armor or Losi or anything but we're in the one eighth scale car business now and these four options that we have from corally the python the shogun the dementor which is my favorite it's a monster truck looking one and what was the other chronos. one chronos chronos is the other one these yeah, things look fun. awesome we were not driving these this is footage <laughs> from the company themselves i have no idea how to properly flip a car in midair i know that when you shoot the throttle forward it'll do one thing when you pull reverse it'll flip the other way i remember trying to do this back in the day and it's a whole nother beast but whoever shot the footage that we were able that they allowed us to edit uh they did an excellent job with it alex had some fun putting these together but if you guys are interested in 1 8 scale uh monster trucks with motion rc customer service then um you know jump on these they're they're really they look really really awesome and hopefully at some point you know we'll get some in here and uh be able to unbox one and drive one around i mean i'd love to drive it around and love to i can find I somewhere to, to jump it yeah i'd love to have some fun with it they are ready to run too it looks like they come all out of the box with everything you need so um you know you could jump on those things so i guess in closing guys it is now one o'clock so that was our hour which is awesome um i just want to reiterate again that crash contest um next week live on this show we will unveil the finalists and right after this show ends next week we will upload the same video you watch live and that's where everybody's going to be able to vote for the uh, winner and then we'll announce that two weeks from today so if next next uh friday would be the 19th then the 26th would be the day that we unveil the winners and again grand prize will get themselves a skynetic air titan runner up will get themselves a skynetic mercury and the uh random draw from everyone who submitted will get themselves a $50 gift card and we will announce those winners again two weeks, two weeks from today. So guys, thank you so much for joining us as always. Um, have an excellent weekend. Uh, have fun flying, driving, tanking, boating, whatever you're going to do in RC, just make it fun. And we'll see you guys next week on Motion RC Live.